Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Play Something New podcast. We're coming to you live from Millennium Games Studio in sunny, yet very windy Rochester, New York. This is our second episode of the podcast. So we're that veterans. Basically, now. means we've made it, yeah. right? Yeah, we're we're like pro. I think we can make T-shirts and get a little plaque. And They'll be up on the website soon. Yeah, nineteen limited ninety nine each, <laughs> two for thirty. Uh, so today on the on the show, we're going to be talking a little bit about some fun stuff coming up in March at the store. Yeah, um, a lot of happenings coming up in the next week or two, Lots and then stuff. we're going to dive right into our uh, main topic for the night, which is game night. Everybody's favorite. Yeah. How to attend one, how to find one, how to be a good attendee, and yeah. finally, and maybe most importantly, how to host your own game night yeah. and spread the love of games among your own groups. Yeah, get some good stuff. So what do we got going on at the, at the Well, store? the beginning of March, we have all kinds of card game stuff coming up. This coming Saturday is a, a card gamer's paradise. We have <laughs> yeah, a lot big events for Pokemon with our Pokemon Cup for March. We have a Yu-Gi-Oh! OTS that day, and near and dear to my heart, we have the Star Wars yeah. Unlimited pre-release that I've been jawing about for a long time now. We have two on Saturday and one on Sunday. Very excited about this one. For Magic players, we also have our, our Commander event, which is going to yeah. be a, a packed Saturday night. Yeah. So there's a lot of good stuff going on in the game room this this Saturday. And I know we got a bunch of board game stuff coming yeah, up, too. Yeah, so it's a new month, so that means a new month of Play Something New games. So for those who don't know, every Friday night we run a special event called Play Something New where we pick one game to feature and teach. The And what we usually do is we partner with different publishers for like special like giveaways and that kind of stuff. So this month, for March 2024, we're going to be partnering with Flat River Group and Horrible Guild, running some of their really cool games. So on March 1st, we've got Dungeon Fighter 2nd Edition. On March 8th, The Great Split. March 15th, we've got Tiny Turbo Cars. March 22nd, we've got Railroad Inc., the red edition. Oh, wow. And then for a, this one isn't part of that publisher, but we ha we found a really cool game that we just kind of want to throw in there as a ran random. It's called Reviving Kathmandu, and it's a really cool little bidding game with really cool components, set collection. So, yeah, that's going to be on March 29th. And there was also, a, hopefully, we're going to be seeing some cool Kickstarters coming in soon. I keep seeing some, hopefully, shipping notifications around the start of March for things like Necro Molds. I think Botany is coming in. I know Necro Molds was one of your, <sighs> so on your to-do list, for I'm, sure. I am so excited for Necro Molds. <laughs> so, yeah, there's going to be some, hopefully, some big Kickstarter stuff coming in. You know, fingers crossed, you know, it's Kickstarter, so who knows exactly. But March looks like it's going to be some fun stuff for Kickstarter. We'll be announcing some of that stuff on yeah. socials when they come in, probably, so yeah. everybody has a, a leg up on what we're getting. Yep, absolutely. Come in and grab them. Yeah. So uh, nice. what, what else we got? So what have you been playing the last couple of weeks since we since we met for our very first episode? Yeah, so let me think here. I have been playing... A, I know I, I talked about uh, some of the games last time. I've been playing the uh, Shipwreck Arcana uh, a lot, which I know that Tennille are going to be streaming right after this. So if you want to check out Ship, uh, Shipwreck Arcana, you can check us out at 5.30 back here on the channel. Uh, what about you? I'm playing a few board games and a lot of uh, Star Wars. Obviously, we'll get back to that later. I've... I've talked about that enough, or have I? Uh, this week, I got to play a few board games. I finally got around to playing La Havre. La Havre? La, La Havre. La Havre. <laughs> after about 10 years of wanting to and about four years of owning it, I finally got it to the table with our uh, esteemed colleague, Brandon. Yeah, what'd you think? It was fantastic. You can see what the hype's about, for sure. It's yeah. a Uli Rosenberg classic. Is it about uh, farming? Nope, it's about <gasps> shipping. However, you can get cows and grain Oh, okay. And if you have multiple cows, you can make more cows. I'm sensing some themes. So we have some <laughs> some farming elements on the French docks in the 1700s. Despite that, excellent two-player game. A lot of, lot of good hype. Yeah, that's on sure. my list to play for sure. Yep, very, very good. One other one we got to the table was called Targi. This one is a, a two-player game that flew under the radar for a little while. It was out of print for a few years finally got it back to the table last monday okay it's it's a fantastic two-player worker placement game set collection and they just released an expansion for it recently that adds all kinds of new stuff to the base game if you play two-player games and you haven't heard of this one or you're looking for something new to, to kind of supplement what you're doing i can't recommend this one enough it plays in about an hour or less yeah it's back in print now because yeah. it was it was hard to find for a long time back in print the base game and the expansion are on our shelves right now it's going to be one of those games that's going to be in my rotation for two-player games for a long time. It's It's got a fantastic depth of strategy, kind of a cool theme. 
and it has a lot of strategy packed right into a small box that's just a card and a couple cards and a couple meeples really so if anybody's looking for a, a good two player game to test something different I can't recommend this one enough. It'll it'll be making the table for me. Play something new, right? Oh, ooh, maybe. play something different. You play, play something, something different new. that is also new to you. <laughs> and Targi will do both those things for you. Yeah, if you're joining in for the first time, for her, we've got Tanil running the equipment in the background. She's also mic'd up, so she'll be quipping in from time to time. So if you're wondering where the disembodied voice is, that's Tanil. It's coming from right up there. <laughs> I only do quips. Only only quips. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so another game that I've been playing is this Coffee Rush. I know I talked about this, I think, briefly last episode, but we actually played the Coffee Rush game on Twitch two weeks ago, and I was blown away by this game. It's so simple. I've heard it, a lot of good things it's, from many people. It's like very Tetris-y, but it's very, very fast-paced. It It's very much inspired by uh, video games like Overcooked, if you're familiar with that, where it's like you're sure. just... This, like unlike Overcooked, it's not cooperative. Where you're just trying to, you know, do your own thing. You're running a coffee shop, just trying to get the your orders as fast as you can. But the thing I really like about, well, two things I really like about it, the mechanic is every order I do, you have to add to your queue, and any unfulfilled orders at the end of your turn start slotting down. And if they hit the bottom of your track, that's when you start sure. losing points. The pressure is really on. Yeah, so it's middle of that It's one. really, you know, I can teach the game in thirty seconds. It's not hard, but it like it, that pressure builds up. And the other thing is the components. The components are amazing. It's a, it's like a thirty-five dollar game, and it comes with some of the best board game pieces I have seen in a long time. They're like these are rivaling like eighty dollar Kickstarter games, and you get the game for less than forty bucks. So really, really cool coffee rush. Uh, highly recommend this one. This was a shout out to Joel Humans, who's a friend of mine. He recommended it to us. It's fantastic. It even comes with these like super little cute cups that you can like put your drinks and stuff Pinkies in. Up. Pinkies up. Pinkies up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, speaking of cups, we're gonna we're gonna use these cups right now. Uh, occasionally on this show, we're going to do a toast to either a game company or a game or a player or yeah. something in the around town that has kind of gone gone above and beyond and done done something awesome. It should come as no surprise that I'm gonna toast Fantasy Flight Games tonight on their rollout of Star Wars Unlimited. They deserve a lot of credit for yeah. doing a long campaign and rolling it out. Slowly and steadily, and with enough juice the entire time to keep me interested. Yep. And it's about to land tomorrow when everything is set and ready to go. Yep. It's really quite an achievement. They started about 10 months ago. I think last May yep. was the initial yep. announcement for it. And it's very, very hard to keep 10 months of momentum going yep. to hype up your card game. I've seen the card games come and go. And yeah. Well, I think three card games have come out since the announcement. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. the, there's initial hype, for sure, yeah. that lasts a little while, and then it kind of fades away. And they've done an excellent, excellent job over the over the almost year now of continuing to make small little announcements and in, you know about the way the organized play is going to work, about how the, the game's going to play different formats for the game to keep players kind of tagged along yep. right up until release <clears throat> time from the demos they did at Gen Con in August to the spoilers that they have cleverly on their website rolling out yep. a little bit at a time to keep you interested. They definitely deserve a lot of credit for for keeping that momentum going and, yep. and landing the product at the right time. The road show last month was a perfect time to do demos directly before the release of it. Yep. So we're going to toast real quick to Fantasy Flight for their amazing rollout of this game yep. and also the amount of things that they're rolling out with <laughs> yeah. the game you see here that we have the starter deck obviously in this little pre-release pack this is what you're going to get at the pre-release event this weekend it's kind of styled after magic where you get six packs to build the deck yep. get some promos but they've also kind of gone above and beyond with all kinds of other cool stuff that they've sent we have star wars unlimited the flag star wars unlimited the pin <gasps> Star Wars Unlimited, the Luke Skywalker deck box. Ooh. Star Wars Unlimited, the lanyards. Oh my gosh. We have Star Wars Unlimited, the pens. Star Wars Unlimited stickers. It's exciting, the stickers. <laughs> we have a Star Wars Unlimited launch kit, which is going to come with uh, enough to get promos for the weekend. Your Luke and Darth Vader promo shield tokens. All kinds of cool stuff to add to your pre-release experience. And finally, we have Star Wars Unlimited, the journal. We got one of these. 
You could write down your Star Wars unlimited your stats. experiences, your stats. <laughs> you could write things in your diary, like, dear diary, I hate my dad. He's always on the Death Star and never pays attention to me. <laughs> so we have He this blew as up well. on. <laughs> so all that to say that there's a lot of cool stuff we're going to be giving away this weekend to celebrate the launch of the game. So come down and join us on Saturday or Sunday and get a kind of a first taste of what we're going to be doing. Yeah. We're going to start events every Wednesday night, weekly as well. Constructed events starting on the 13th to roll out the yeah. the weekly plan for the game. So we're all very excited about that. Yeah. Pre-releases are su- such a fantastic event, too. Like, I remember when I was getting into, like, competitive games, pre-releases were, like, the, the first way I started. And it's just, it's a fun event because you're... The barrier entry is super easy to like <laughs> overcome. You get you get great stuff. So sure, yeah. And the nice part about games like this, with with things like Star Wars attached, is they'll they'll bring gamers out that haven't played yep. in a little while to yeah. see the new game, particularly yep. if they remember playing the old games. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that I kind of reconnected with at the road show. Uh, that was awesome to see people I haven't seen in five, six, yep. seven, maybe even in more than a decade for stuff like this. So yep. we're definitely very excited about the launch of it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's going to be really cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really excited to try this one. Yeah, I've yet to play this one, but this one, I just hearing you and Brandon talk about it is like crazy. Like, like yeah, it we're looks we're fun. we're all in I would say, <laughs> on, on Star Wars Unlimited. I'm very very excited about it. So, yeah. here's to Fantasy Flight. Thanks for a good rollout. Cheers. Hopefully, years of awesome products yeah. to come on that one. Yeah. Well, so we also on the bottom of the screen, you'll see uh, podcast at millenniumgames.com. If you folks have questions that you'd like us to answer in a little bit more in depth. Uh, discussion feel free to shoot questions to that email i see we've got a couple in the in the chat we'll answer in a second but feel free to use that podcast email to send in questions for future episodes and we'll, we'll answer them Love but it. i see the question here would you recommend the board game Catan this weekend some friends recommended that game to me so I, Catan was one of my first board games that got me into the modern hobby i i think it's fantastic it really does do a good job at bridging the gap if you've grown up playing parker brothers monopoly style games to the modern sure, hobby. I did. Yeah. It was a nice intro to yeah, it, it's, something a little bit more. There's going to be a lot, like, if, you're ne- if you've never played a modern board game, Catan might seem a little bit much, but it really does set the basic framework of a lot of games. We, I, I would say Catan is kind of like this generation's Monopoly in, like, what it did for the gaming industry. Like, I think Monopoly will be talked around the same. It's, it's the first game that kind of caught fire with the mainstream yeah. that kind of delved into that resource euro yeah. setting. Yeah. So it, it's been a mainstay for over 20 years, almost yep. 30 now, I think. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Particularly yeah. if you're new to the hobby. Yeah. Catan's a great starting point. One of the best for sure. If I know a lot of times I get asked about, should I buy a game that my friend always has? And so if your friends already have Catan, another two good games that kind of fit, meet the same mechanics would be Bonanza, the bean farming game, which is another UA Rosenberg game. That's going to have a lot of the trading elements that Catan has. And if you prefer the dice rolling aspect of Catan, check out Space Base. Those are other options that kind of have a lot of similar mechanics to Catan that I really like as well. So, yeah. Yeah, so thank you for the question. Again, if you have more, feel free to shoot the email over to Tanil, and she'll get it in the queue for our next episode. Episode three. Episode three, which we will announce at the end of this one of what we're going to be talking about then. Well, let's get through episode two. Yeah, first. let's get through episode two. <laughs> so episode two, we are going to be discussing how to host a party a game party at your anywhere. If you want to host a party and just how to get into the community, the, a lot of the stuff we're going to be talking about is going to be from a board game perspective, but a lot of this principle can be applied if you're, you know, running Magic the Gathering or even the Star Wars Unlimited or Dungeons and Dragons. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to run those style games because everyone know like if if you know you're going to a Dungeons and Dragons night, you, the expectations are already there. We're going to be playing D&D. So board games sometimes it's a little bit crazy because Sometimes you just don't know what the night is going to look like. So we've been to some some nights that have... Yeah, we've all been there. If we, you've been playing games for a long time, yeah, you've, you've been to those nights. Yeah, the nights where you're like, wow, Things that was... Things don't click quite like you want them. That was an experience. I know uh, I was at a party one time where we were discussing what we should be playing, and I think we narrowed the selection down to around 100 games. And then for the next... 
hour we discussed amongst those hundred games which ones we wanted to play. It's a game within a game. Yeah. It's using the game as yeah. its own its own awful pregame. Yeah, analysis paralysis does not just affect the board game itself, but sometimes the, the party and just yeah, choosing. That's that's for sure. I've been at, at many of those. I've, many of those have been my faults. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Games, yeah. Yeah. These are a lot of this is the things we have done to people and we've inflicted on yes, others we, we, and we've, we've learned we've, our lesson. We've grown and learned, and <laughs> it was chances are it was our fault to begin with. So, <laughs> so I apologize. I was asking when I was doing show notes for this. I was hanging out at a bar up in Rochester and I asked the bartender what was a board game experience that he had that was negative and he said that they played Scrabble but with Bananagram pieces and so Bananagram pieces don't have the score so tough to figure out who won that so no one knew who was winning it just was like just forming words I was like that (laughs) that's an experience you have to remember in your head that B's oh, are worth three points. I, yeah, I would have no I know X is worth a lot. But yeah, so <laughs> we've all been to, to parties that may or may not have been our favorite experience. So we want to give some tips and tricks on how to have a good good time, as it were. Sure, so. how to have a good time and how to help others have a good time. Yeah. Step one in a lot of this for, for many people is actually finding a community to start with. Yep. You can talk about hosting. You can talk about getting your big group together. Step one of all that stuff is finding a group. Yeah, to begin with, and that, which tricky. can is tricky and it can be a challenge. Fortunately, it's like anything else. You just have to put yourself out there a little bit. There are resources to help you do that. Yeah. Our Play Something New on Friday nights that you touched on earlier is kind of the premier way that people can just walk in yeah. and, and find a tailor-made group, a game that somebody will teach you. And we have plenty of people that have been coming to that for years now and have yeah. made groups. We've had people. I think our get, average is like 60 people right now. Sure. Yeah. We've had a lot, a lot of longstanding friendships built mm-hmm. out of that. We've had yeah. marriages built out of that. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of that is, is longstanding friendships that, that grow out of that kind of community. I know Game Night Rock is one that you do that you're passionate yeah. about. Yeah. Game Night Rock is, for those who don't know, it's our buddy Jake, who has been on several of our streams, runs Game Night Rock here in Rochester, where his, his organization just goes into local bars and restaurants and just brings in a bunch of games, and you can just hang out and play. I, I, it was actually last week I saw, it was a really cool experience watching, that there was a group of seven people playing games, and I don't think that they knew each other prior. I think maybe like a couple couples came in, but this just giant group formed played a few rounds of some social deductions and at the end of the night they're they all exchanged numbers and set up a D campaign i don't think half of yeah, them why not even, like i was just right. like oh okay like there it is so yeah sometimes all, all it takes is that you find other people that like the same things you do yeah because you think that maybe they aren't out there or you know you're you think that kind of it's your hobby and you have a hard time sharing it with other people there yeah. are Literally thousands of people in, in Rochester alone yep. that enjoy playing these kinds of things. And I know that uh, a lot of, like, at least in my experience, gamers want to share their experience. Like, this is not like one of those, oh, sure. like, oh, yeah, no, I don't want you to, I don't want to play. Like, I, like they, they want to play. They, I, mean, I, I have spent sure. a lot of money on my board games, <laughs> and I want people to experience them. Sure. So it's, it's not, if you know where to look, I don't think it's hard. Sure. I mean, the social aspect can be daunting if yep. you're not used to that sort of yep. thing. And that we have a lot of people, I've been one of them, that you know, sometimes has a hard time getting out there. But these groups tend to be very welcoming. Yep. And they want you to come. They, they want to share their hobby yep. with you. And you're yep. not going to have to twist their arm to get them to show you their favorite game. I can yep. promise you that. I remember the first time I came, this is before I worked here, I came to a, a, a board game event here. And I think I walked in and I was immediately grabbed by two people. Like, hey, let's play. And I was just immediately in the game. Yeah. I played Mysterium. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, so it, it's it's they're very, very fun environments. One thing I do want to mention on that, and I know this is something that I struggled with at first, is be open to who you're going to meet. Because like I, I had this idea of like this is what gamers are going to look like, and I, I had like this whole like <laughs> so like some of some of my best friends in in the board gaming hobby have been formed, and and they just through various things like me, we might never have connected. Like just the board gaming brought us all together, and we have formed great friendships. And just go sure, in. Sure, there just, there's a tremendous cross-section of yeah. humanity at these places there's lawyers yeah. and firefighters and students and yeah all, all kinds of all kinds of people it really does it is a melting pot of yeah of different different kinds of people which is a wonderful thing yeah so just kind of go in and like meet people and again if you go to like one of those events like meetup is another great app if you're not here in rochester meetup is a great app where there's a lot of board game connects on that and just it just kind of go in and just be honest and say, hey, I'm new here. How, how can I get involved and how can I play a game? And you will There will pro- be somebody there who will get you involved, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. So now that we've we figured out how to find a community, now let's talk about what, how to be a good attendee. And, again, this is something that you know, I, I know I have 
made a lot of issues in the past with some of my people with some of my groups of no, no. I know I know but yeah so we want to just like you know like what what does it look like to be a good party member so you're, you're going to a game night and what does that look like so the first thing I want to say is so when I was in college I learned the, like a buddy of mine had an expression that we all kind of adopted and it just it's we call it it, the expression is it's not about the chili so the story is there was a guy who was part of a community potluck where they would do like he was it was part of a church when the church was doing these like monthly potluck dinners with just chili and a lot of people would be like i'm not gonna go because i don't like chili and my buddy's dad would always bring a bag lunch and he was the guy who didn't like chili because he would say the point of this gathering is to connect with people and to be part of a community and it's not about the chili it's not about just what you eat so if chili is your holdup bring other food and go connect with people so i have this expression that i'll use it's not about the chili and how i apply that with games is we all have these preferences on what we want to play like i have you know the, these are my favorite games and these are what i like to play and there have been times where someone's like hey let's play this game and i look at it and oh oh that's not really what i was hoping to play tonight and when i sat down and played it it actually turned out really good or maybe it didn't, and it just, I wanted to, but for me, it was not so much the, I'm experiencing this game, it's I'm connecting with people. Sure, that's that's a big part of why you're there, yeah. right? And, you know, it, it, similarly, we, we talk about ruining fun a yep. lot. Like, don't don't be the fun ruiner of the group. <laughs> yes. Right, you, you have your preferences, your favorite things other people do, they will not always line up, and especially, you know, don't, don't, be too hard on other people for their likes yeah and their interests right if you if you go to one of these groups particularly bigger groups where they have multiple tables set up of games there's going to be a wide variety of things going on and there might just be some party games somebody might be playing throw throw burrito in the corner which by the way is an amazing game if you haven't played it's super fun and it's not exactly a a brain teaser but (laughs) it's awesome and yeah a lot of those people that's important to remember are are there as an escape from reality yeah they're, they're you know they get out of work they whatever house stuff they have going on whatever it is right they're there to escape that and if that kind of game helps them escape that yeah don't put them down or the game down because of it because they're having their own fun like you want to have your own fun yeah so it's very easy to get into a rut of well i'm too good for that group yeah, or i'm too elitist. good for this game yeah. and and that it may be something you don't want to play, in which case you can try and find a group that maybe has something that's more tailored to what yeah. you want to play. But, you know, realize that those people are there doing doing their thing their way and they have yeah. every right to enjoy games like you enjoy games. Yeah. Well, even going back to the question earlier about Catan, you know, Catan has been around for 30 years and it's things that have been around for a long time it's easy for culture to hate on them like it's like it's been around like oh you know it's, sure i've been around a long time it's yeah easy. so like like it, it's the so it, it can be easy for people to you know hate on things like a ton because they've been around longer like oh well you're playing a ton i'm playing this but the truth is is Catan was a big gateway for me into this hobby, and I owe a lot of respect to that. And it's it's a game that may not be my first choice to grab off a shelf these days, but if I'm at a party and someone's like, "Let's play," I'm like, "Okay, let's do it." I'm I'm there. If somebody wants to learn the wide world of board games, you'll find few games that you'd want to teach them over. Yeah, Catan. yeah. Despite the fact that you may have played it hundreds of times yeah. or thirty years worth or whatever, yeah, it's it's something that needs to be respected as a teaching tool that's led thousands of people if not yeah. millions of people into the hobby and the, the the like especially if you're going you mentioned like party games a lot of those party games are they have building blocks that we use to to bring in heavier games you know sure. like if i want to play twilight imperium i'm not going to teach a five-year-old that because they they're they're still experiencing candy land like they have no idea these like advanced techniques and everything so starting with, with i know everybody games. at home your five-year-old's very smart <laughs> <laughs> well, Candyland is Twilight Imperium may still not be for them. Yeah. <laughs> if, if your five year old is playing, I, I want to meet your five year old who's playing at Twilight Imperium. <laughs> but yeah, the yeah, don't be elitist, don't be a snob. And I know that I have a tendency to do that, and that's one of the things that I have done. I have I have made parties at the like in the past where I've been like, oh, we should be playing this, and caught myself later going, well, oh. you. Sure, that's not always a bad thing. You want to introduce people to yeah, different we, things. Oh, yeah, yeah. If somebody wants to play Catan over and over for the next 30 years and that's all they want to do, yeah. 
you you should step in and say, well, there's there's others, thousands of other games that you might like, and yep. you're trying to introduce them. It doesn't mean you're being a snob about it. It just means you're trying to help them enjoy something else, yeah, play something new, if you will. Like it's yeah. it, it's not necessarily a bad thing to try to coax people into out of their comfort zone a little bit. I think for me, where the mentality shifted is, I would I would be so quick to say, someone would be like, let's play this, and I would immediately be like, mm, actually, we should play this instead. Where, you had an agenda. Yeah. Where instead what I would do, like like the mindset shift became, all right, I'm going to play that. And then at the end of it, like once people are like, that was so much fun, be like, oh, okay, well, if you really like this one, if you want to check out some other games, here are some alternatives. And like, kinda... Sure. If you're one of the more experienced people in the room, use that to your advantage. Play that game and then in your mind go, hmm, what else do I know yeah. that can build off of this party game or this whatever, you know, if somebody wants to play, you know, throw throw burrito or something like yep. that there are other games that take some of those basic concepts and build them into yep. kind of the next the next level and the easiest way to get people to do that and not be scared of it is to introduce it to them slowly yeah yeah that that that's another thing that i want to touch on is i i wrote down uh, teach play and win with grace especially if you're the experienced board gamer mm, that's um, a tough one i was at a party <laughs> one time where this a guy taught a game and then just demolished us where we're like it was like I'll never we, understand. We had zero chance to even. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what like what I'm supposed to be doing on my turn, and he is just like, "Well, I've got 600 points. Like, I got 10. Like, it. it so, but moreover, you didn't learn I didn't anything. Know, I didn't know what game, the, what right? was even going on. I don't remember what game it is. I think I repressed it. You learned <laughs> that you don't want to play the next game with that guy. Is what yeah. you learned. Yeah. So if you are an experienced board gamer. Teach and play with grace. And sometimes, like, now some some people actually prefer a challenge. Like, I really like, like, when, when Jim and I are playing games together, I really like when oh sure just, like, Jim just goes all out. I, and I like to figure it out for myself. But I've also played a lot of these games. I can't say I enjoy losing, but I definitely enjoy the, the process of someone else winning and trying to figure out what I could have done differently. Yep. Like, the, you know, they're... Very few games, or at least the, those kind that we tend to play, are just based on luck. And, oh, my God, I got so unlucky the whole yeah. time. I promise you there were things you could have done. Yeah. And if you get beat by somebody by a lot, instead of just going, oh, man, this game sucks, or, oh, man, I can't believe how unlucky I got, sit down and go, why did this other person beat me? Yeah. Like, how? What What did they do yeah. differently than me? What can I adopt for yeah. next time, right? Yeah. And as long as the person that beat you isn't slamming the game down on the table and... You know, booyah, grandma. <laughs> you'll be, you, you'll learn something from them. Yeah. And like, like you're saying, if you are winning or if you're going to win, win graciously. Yeah. Yeah. You know, help other people along if they look like they want yeah. it or are requesting it. Yeah. Coach people. If sure. They want it, don't, yeah. if they don't want it, don't do it. But, but yeah, if, if you're playing a game you played a hundred times and it's a tougher game and other people are doing it for the first time, you're probably going to win. Yeah. Or at least do very well. Yeah. And it can be, intimidating for other people and it, you know the more snobby you are about that the yeah. harder it is to get people to play again and again yeah. with you yeah with that the other thing i want to mention is know when to fold them kenny rogers was a smart man yes yes know when to fold them one of my one a board game experience was actually with jim that is seared in my mind for the rest will always be seared I in know my where mind this is going i there is a board game that i really really like and it's called specter ops and it's a hidden movement game and i have been r raving I'm getting flashbacks now. i had been raving to jim about this game you gotta try it for i think like a year and a half we finally sat down and played it and what i didn't know is when you play with five players you in introduce a new mechanic that i had never played with before it's called sorrow <laughs> Played, so I've been raving about while. this game for years. Finally sit down with Jim and some of the guys to play. And we I, I'd never played five player. And it adds a, like a hidden traitor element. And it it did not go well. We're an hour and a half in. And I just look up and I everyone at the table is just like, clearly not having a good time. And it I... Happens. And I just, I was like, I felt so bad, but I just like brought up the, are you guys having fun? <laughs> I think Shaggy's like, no. 
And that's when you knew when to fold them. Yeah, and I was like, okay, so maybe we put this game away and play something else. And yeah, there, uh, You don't have to finish that off. You read, read the room, see yeah, what's going on. Yeah. If it's just not working out, it's just not working out. Likewise, if if there is a game that you know you just hate to your core, yeah, you may not want to sit down to play it, even yeah. if you're trying to be nice. Yep. You're knowing when to fold them is also knowing when not to sit down at the yeah. poker table in the first place sometimes. Yep. And if, if you know that you're you're there to play Euro games with somebody and somebody's like, hey, you want to come over here and play Uno with us? If it's not your thing, it's not your thing. And that's politely declined. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with yeah. that. Don't say, oh, Uno sucks. I, I never want to do that. Yeah. Get out of here. But say, no, I'm going to pass. Thank you for the offer. Yeah. And, and move on because you know that you know you're not going to enjoy it. And then if you don't enjoy it, the table won't enjoy having you there. Yeah. So, yeah. In yeah the words of Kenny Rogers, no one to fold. No one to fold them. Yeah. There's a guy in my group who, for a variety of reasons, doesn't play games with with demons and demonic things in them. And there's been a couple board games where we've played where he's just been like, "Hey, I'm just not going to play that." But I'll sit and watch and have fun with you guys. But I'm just not going to play that. And that really helped sure. me develop language to say similar things of this game just isn't for me. And I feel like I will have a meltdown if I play it. And that's fine. And when it comes to hosting, which we're going to get into yeah. in a minute, that's that's a piece of the puzzle, knowing your group and knowing what your group might like and what your group definitely doesn't like. Yeah. And curating the experience that they are going to have based on that. Yep. Yeah. So hosting, what do you, how do you, where do you start with hosting a, a, a party? It depends on, on what kind of thing you're looking to do. If you want to get together with three friends, that's very different than wanting to host a 50 person walk-ins welcome at yep. a, you know, a moose lodge or yeah, this, yeah. You know, the school yep. cafeteria. So it kind of depends on what, what what you want out of it as as the host to begin with? What are you trying to accomplish? Yeah. If you just want to set up a game night with good friends on the regular once a month, that's that's easier. But also, it can be more rewarding mm -hmm. to set up something bigger that that has a lot of attendees and yeah. kind of a melting pot of interest to just help draw new people to the hobby. So it depends on what you have the energy for and what you and what you want to do. Yeah. And a lot of that boils down to location too. Yeah. And, and you know, if you're having it at your kitchen table. Invite enough people that will fill your kitchen table comfortably. Comfortably, yeah. Don't invite ten people and have to put you pull the couch over, you pull some stools <laughs> over. You're sitting on the dog, like you. We've we've all been to that bad. Oh yeah, bad yeah. experiences. You've all been to the one where twelve people show up and there's seating for seven. Yeah, and you're trying to figure out what godforsaken eight player game you yeah. can play sitting around a table, bent over, hunched over a chair, whatever it is. So, you know, know where you're going to be and know yeah. who you want to invite. Set the, set the expectation. Set, right? set the table, so to speak. Yeah. I remember I was at a – I had sent – I did not clearly define the, the parameters of the night, but I was like, hey, let's play this great five-player game. I had invited four other people, had the whole thing set up, and then two of the people invited their roommates, so now I had seven. And it was like, oh, okay. And then yeah. there, there's the, oh, I'll just stay and watch. Yep. Like, Rule uh, – I don't know if it's rule number one of hosting, but don't be a martyr is yep. a is a big one. Yes. It's try and find something that the group will enjoy. Yeah. So that you or somebody else doesn't have to sit out and watch. Because despite how much they may tell you that, oh, I don't mind sitting out and watching, they didn't come there to sit out and watch. Yes. They came there to actually play and have fun. So do your do your best. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Yeah. And you know, concessions have to be made. But a yeah. lot of the time you can you can set it up so yep. that you're doing what your group is doing. And it, it's also okay if there is a bigger group that you're playing different games. Well, you, I, you have to. I think necessity at some point. I think there's this, like, this idea that I see a lot where people are like, we all got to play together. And I'm like, yeah, but there's 10 of us. What 10, ga what 10 player game are we playing that isn't a party game? If we're, if we're playing something a little bit heavier, it is okay. This is the one time it's fat okay to split the party, unlike Dungeons & Dragons. It is okay to split the party. <laughs> the entire party will thank you. Yes. And it also lets you... It lets people play things that they might want to play that other yeah. people don't want to play, which is a huge part of the of the process. Yeah, you know, no one to fold them, but they may want to play the yeah. game that you folded on, and they can go do that. Yeah, they can do that at the table adjacent to you. Yeah, without much problem. Yeah, come up with so something that can help with that, especially if you're in a uh, group that is a little bit bigger, is to come up with some sort of system to pick the game in advance. I know I talked about how it narrowed it down to 100. That happened. And out of that conversation, we, we spawned this whole thing about how, like, who's going to pick in what order and then here are the games. And it just it became so much more streamlined when Jim is responsible for picking the game. And sure. he's got a list of everything we want to play. He's ultimately it's his pick, and then next month that's going to be my pick, and then or narrow it down to a couple options. 
I mean, I, I, I keep a list of, of games that I want to play that I haven't gotten to the table yet. Yeah. And when the opportunity comes around, we, I break out the list. I say, well, what, how does everybody feel about this one? Yep. And yep. If it's something we want to play, break it out. If not, I'll go to the next thing on the list because the list, believe me, is extensive. Yeah. Part of your job as a host is to curate that mm-hmm. experience for the people. Yes. That you're hosting. Yeah. It's part of being a good host for anything. Yes. Yeah. Is, is making sure that you're catering a little bit to the people that you know are coming. Yeah. And if possible, do your best to be prepared. The the experience of, and this is what I did with Root, is I <laughs> brought Root over to a friend's house, and it was new and shrink. And so we're like, we're going to open it, we're going to punch it, we're going to read the rules oh, together. That's, that's the word. I almost, do that? I almost threw that game away. I thought it was going to be this cutesy little game, and I did not realize it was this complicated Opening game. a new game with the people at the table is about the worst experience. Yeah. <laughs> Getting the rule book out, setting it on the table, and we're like, let's learn together. Ugh. I want to go home immediately. So do your best to be prepared. And sometimes that means just sending out the tool, the rules teach video. Like, if, hey, yeah, if, it's a, if it's a game no one at the table has played before, Hey, I found this video on YouTube. It's a 15-minute teaching video. Everybody, please watch this. Yeah. So you don't have to sit here and listen to me read through the whole rule book and then forget the first half by the time yeah. I get to the last half. Yep. One thing you mentioned earlier was the location. I know this is – I often hear this with people is the, oh, I can't host. I don't have a very big space. And and that may be true. Like if, if you're in a one-bedroom apartment with a table that's tiny, you're not going to be able to host Twilight Imperium. But there are a lot of resources around you that can host – these kind of events, the community centers, libraries. Uh, if you live in an apartment complex, chances are they have a community center yeah. that you can rent or or loan and get the money back or whatever, and they will have yeah. possibly kitchen setups and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's, lo- that's a popular choice. Yep, yeah. a lot of restaurants don't mind. Um, I do want to mention if you're going to a restaurant, please get something uh, from the menu that really does help. Sure. Uh, seeing a bunch of board gamers go into a restaurant and just drink water for three hours is frustrating from a, from the wait staff perspective. So support, support local. But yeah, there's a lot of places around you that you might not realize that are very well welcoming to board gamers. And I, I see it all the time. Just people around playing at Starbucks at all sure. sorts of stuff. There's all kinds of options and all kinds of choices with who you invite. It can just be your friend group or people from work or people from school, your family, you know, the, the group you're you're trying to, to host can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah. You can be introducing it to a whole bunch of new people. You can just talk to a few random people that you work with every day and be like, hey, would, sometime would you be interested in maybe learning these things that I'm into? Yeah. And if you get a couple people, yeah, you're off to the races. Yeah. There's a question there in the chat. Is there a table fee for the back room? So obviously we at Millennium Games have a very large game room. So the... It, the answer is kind of. It, it's not a. It's not a fee. It's a what we call a credit swap, where we ask that everybody who's going to be using the game room spend ten dollars in the store. If you don't know what you want to buy, you get it back as a gift card to the, for the store. So if you come in and buy a sixty dollars board game, that gets you and five of your friends in all day at the game room. So there is a fee, but it's not a entry fee. It's just more of buy something in the store, and if you don't know what, you get it as a uh, store credit for next time. Sure. So yeah, and you can hang out and play that board game for hours. Yeah, off that. Yeah, so there are uh, a lot of places around you. So to kind of summarize, you find find people is go to like like just check out your resources around you. Uh, check the online. Check chat for chat. Are chat boards even a thing anymore? <laughs> I mean, they, the, I just myself 90, on that one. Like Reddit, you know, yeah, Reddit. Kind of a, a chat yeah. board. Yeah, yeah. Meetup is a great app for that MySpace, kind of stuff. My, yeah, check your MySpace. MySpace. What about your Zanga? I just, I, 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 I just Oof, read about Zanga. I, like, wow. I loved it. Tumblr, your. <laughs> but m- most most local game stores, if you're mm-hmm. not around here, will have some kind of game night or yeah. board game night. And yep. if not, there are plenty of other yep. boards to check and places to check and, and places to put up your own stuff. Sometimes it's worth just putting a flyer up in the community center of your apartment complex saying, hey, mm-hmm. anybody interested in playing some games sometime? Yeah. And you'd be surprised at, at what you can get out yep. of that. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, check around you. Uh, if, you're going to, uh, if you're going to a party, be kind, be gracious, be open to playing something new. Don't be elitist. Take a shower. Take a shower. Very important. Very important. Very try important. try to add something while you're there. Yeah. Be, be a plus. Yeah, be a plus. That's a good. Yeah, good. Be, be a plus. A, Demo a game to a new person. Try and teach a kid something. Try yeah. try and add value to the place that you're in. Yeah. Whatever they're doing. Yeah. And then for hosting, set the set the tone. Be clear in expectations. Find a good good spot. 
tell people what we're playing. If you're if you're going to be doing the teaching or selecting someone to do teaching, make sure that everyone's prepared. One thing we forgot to mention is determine what the food situation is going to be. Like, do you want Cheetos at the game table? That's a that's a question. I've had to nav- I've had to navigate that one. I've just seen a guy bring Cheetos. And I'm like, oh god, <laughs> I'm gonna get hives. <laughs> He's not allergic to that. No, no, just stress stress hives. That's why I sleeve my games. (laughs) Sleeve your games. Sleeve your games. (laughs) Yeah, so those are some kind of basic quick tips that we have for running a game night. And again, that that those do apply for all sorts of games, but it often runs to people who are running board game nights often get stuck up. And most importantly, get out there and try it. Yeah, get out there and try it. Play. If you don't want to host your own, at least find one to be a part of to yeah. get into the rhythm of how they how they can work yeah. for you. Yeah. The 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 biggest barrier to entry that I hear in games is the these just seem so complicated and I don't know True. where to start. And it's It's actually, like that with everything. If you've never ridden a bike before, it's complicated. Yeah. You yeah. You gotta get on the bike and ride it. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of the barrier to entry. <sighs> so next or not next week, it's by Two weeks. So in two weeks, bi-weekly, we, we're not that good. Bi-weekly, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, we're not we're not there. Yet. We're not that pro. We're yeah. not next level. So in two weeks, we are going to be back here with the topic of how to break through barriers when it comes to gaming. As I just mentioned, there's a lot of them. People tend to look at these things with questions of just how do I get started and all that. And we're going to be bringing in a friend of ours. His name is Brandon, and he's another staff member here at the store. And he is going to be helping us discuss how to break through barriers to entry and a lot of the different stuff we have at the store. So, Look yeah. Look forward to that. Our third, count Our third, them, yes. third episode. Yeah, we've got to come up with a funky name for that one still. Yeah, we'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's what we got for today. All right. Thank you, everyone, for checking us out, asking questions, and in the chat. Thank you to Tanil for running everything in the background, and creating our cool hamster graphic. You're welcome. Sweet You're welcome. hamster graphic. What will she come up with next? Find out in two weeks at our third episode. Third Maybe episode. Maybe nothing. Maybe not. <laughs> and in the meantime, we'll see you on Saturday or Sunday yes. for the Star Wars Unlimited pre-release. Yeah. At twelve and four on Saturday and twelve on Sunday. Bring your friends. Room for Bring walk-ins. Your friends. Room for walk-ins. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.